I was born and raised in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, and uh, spent most of my life here. Um, grew up playing most of the st standard stuff everybody played, hockey, played soccer in the summertime, and, uh, but I loved math and science in school, and uh, had an opportunity to work for a local company as, a, as an engineering student in high school, didn't get paid. My job was photocopying documents for engineers, and I'd look at all the names that were on the, the document, and I'd think about how impressive these people must have been in order to have designed and built such an amazing thing, which was the Hibernian platform, and, and, uh, and I knew right then that's what I wanted to do. And I uh, was pretty involved at school, I was involved extracurricularly in the engineering society, I helped bring the uh, Canadian engineering competition to uh, St. John's for the first time, and uh, my marks were pretty good, so I started you know, with ExxonMobil Canada here uh, right out of school. Steve reported to me when I was the uh, project supervisor for ExxonMobil Canada East. And uh, Steve was a project engineer, particularly um, responsible for the flow line installation on the Hibernia platform. I guess she's kind of got, gotten to see me grow up. She's always been there to provide for me, uh, you know, a lot of guidance uh, and mentorship and, uh, and has really impacted and, and, and shaped who I've become. He's got a quiet um, confidence, uh, he's thorough. He, um, he pursues and, and chases down all the issues that uh, he's responsible to resolve and a depth of technical knowledge that uh, as a supervisor I relied on um, very strongly uh, and he always delivered. It was an incredible time. I mean, Hibernia was, you know, uh, such an amazing asset or is such an amazing asset. People are fantastic. I learned so much when I first started here. And, about three years into that, I, uh, I got an opportunity to move to Houston, and uh, I'd started on a project called the, uh, the Adoptu Project, which was in Sockland Island in Russia, and uh, that was my first glimpse of major project life. I got to do a big greenfield project, and uh, you know I fell in love again uh, with my job. I first met Steve Edwards in 2010 when we started the front end engineering design on the project. Steve was our lead instrument and control engineer at the time and had just come off a couple of other projects that were global in nature and we were uh, having him step in and take on a large responsibility right off the bat for Hebron. I knew that this, this thing was going to mean so much, uh, so many at the time and, and just be able to contribute to that uh, was something that I couldn't pass up. He took on the challenges of the project early on. Uh, and he had a responsibility to deal with a number of contractors. He knew how to bridge between what a project needed and what the operating company needed. Yeah, what he brings together what makes it unique is he brings from having an understanding how it has to work in the end, and then what does it take to be able to build it to make it accomplish what you want to do when you start it up. And Steve's prior time here in Newfoundland working on Hibernia before we ever got into Hebron really leveraged that knowledge that he had. I first met Steve back in 2010 when uh, he was the INC lead for ExxonMobil and I was the interface manager for the Hebron Topsides project. At various points in time Steve would have had to have um, multiple stakeholders consisting of literally hundreds of engineering personnel on, on both the, uh, the, the contractor and subcontractor teams. He doesn't ap apologize for his high expectations of others but yet he's, he's, he's amenable to and approachable uh, to coach and encourage others so that we're all successful towards the one common goal. What impresses me most about Steve is his very active role in making sure that his team and, his, and the young engineers on his team are given the opportunities to demonstrate their ability and to grow their, their ability. He really takes that on as his own personal commitment I truly believe that the oil and gas industry attracts and retains the most amazing people in the world, the greatest talents. And I think on the Hebron project, we had the best of the best. You know, a facility that sits in 90 meters of water, it's located 350 kilometers offshore in one of the harshest environments in the whole world. And people did that. He's patient, he's a really good listener. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, his family and everything. He's a really good family man, and he's been able to balance the demands between what a project like this can put on you as well as what your family needs. And as I've watched Steve work that balance, he's done a very good job. What Steve really represents here is a growing um, generation 
of Newfoundlanders who has seen the oil and gas industry really develop and now represents this growing technical base who are pursuing a career in oil and gas and being quite successful with it. So what impressed me the most and why I think he deserves the award is again to witness his growth from that technical into that person who becomes more and more responsible for overall scope, the bigger picture. So his ability to expand himself and the growth that occurred with him over the last seven years of that project you know, warrants him being recognized for at his age for the ability to do that. Steve has developed a strong technical knowledge of offshore structures. Um, and he has used that technical knowledge to influence uh, a number of critical decisions uh, for the design of the Hebron platform. When I started on Hebron, it was just a little cartoon on a page. And to watch it develop from that cartoon to come all the way to First Oil has been an absolute privilege. And you couldn't ask for a greater experience. And a natural leader to grow through that, see that evolution take place to the reality, it's been great for him and it's been great for what he's uh, been able to do. So, But it's a natural leadership skill that he's got that's really stood out and that's why I think he's, uh, you know, we you use the term the rising star, that's, that's, that's Steve, Steve in action. You know, to be, to be able to engineer and design something so massive, so complex, so magnificent, uh, that opportunity doesn't exist everywhere. People around the world have contributed, but the core the core of what we've done has is, is been right here and I'm just you know so happy, so thrilled, so proud uh, to receive this award and I really think it's, a, it's, a, it's an acknowledgement of, of the team that we built and, uh, and everything that we've achieved.